To talk more about the Turkish angle, we have Dr. Aykan Erdemir in Washington, D.C. Good evening to you from Tel Aviv. Good evening. Um, let's follow the money first. Uh, uh, Turkey is the largest foreign investor in Ukraine, and uh, Erdogan certainly uh, wouldn't like to see these investments go up in flames, right? And this is not just an economic issue, because a lot of those investments are now also in the military and defense field. Uh, Turkey has big ambitions to tap into Ukraine's you know, post-Soviet uh, technology, especially engine technology, missile technology, aviation technology. And a Russian invasion uh, would also bring that kind of cooperation uh, to an end. Hence, uh, Turkey has both strong economic as well as defense interests at risk here. Right. We remember very well what happened last time when Putin closed the borders for Turks in 2015. That was also a major financial blow to uh, Turkey. So there's a lot, of a lot at stake for Turkey. Uh, definitely, because when we take a look at Turkish-Russian relations, it is a, a unique relationship within uh, NATO. Uh, that is, Turkey is heavily dependent on Russian gas. Moscow is building Turkey's first nuclear power plant. Turkey became the first NATO ally to purchase the S-400 air defense system from Russia and then be slapped with CATSA sanctions by the United States. So these uh, bilateral relations are extremely, uh, uh, you know, strong. But at the same time, Moscow and Ankara are on opposing sides of the conflicts uh, in Syria, Libya, as well as in Nagorno-Karabakh. But over the years, uh, the two sides have also found ways of, uh, you know, negotiating these conflicts and find common ground at the expense of third parties by expanding their respective military and political footprints. So this is a very conflicting relationship, complicated relationship that brings together aspects of conflict with aspects of deep cooperation. Right, so maybe there's an option here uh, for uh, Turkey to be a mediator in this crisis? Now, it seems from Moscow's point of view, Turkey is too deeply embedded uh, in Ukraine uh, to be an impartial mediator. The Turkish president has already tried to play that role, but it hasn't uh, delivered any results. Ultimately, Ankara refuses to recognize the Kremlin's annexation of Crimea. Turkey has a special interest in the Crimean Tatar minority, a Turkic minority uh, in Russian-controlled zones. And at the same time, Turkey supplies these armed drones to Ukraine, which Moscow is not happy at all. So ultimately, Turkey has deep relations with Russia, but does not have, I think, good credentials to play a mediating role. Right. Very complicated relationships. And we haven't mentioned the gas pipelines in the works between Russia and Turkey, right? Definitely. And, and that is one of the most bizarre aspects of this relationship, because when Turkey built uh, the Turk Stream pipeline, a second set of pipelines from uh, Russian-controlled territory to Turkey, that basically bypassed Ukraine, thermi uh, therefore undermined Ukraine's ability uh, to use uh, gas flows as leverage against Russia. So that was a huge win for the Kremlin. Uh, and at the same time, this also gives Russia enormous leverage over Turkey, because up to 60 percent of Turkey's natural gas comes from Russia. And as we have seen just last month, when Iran turned off gas supplies to Turkey, uh, Turkey's industry came to a halt. So Russia has the same kind of leverage over Turkey, especially during the cold winter months, and cripple not only Turkey's industry, but also freeze Turkey's household consumers. Right. Dr. Aykan Erdemir, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We'll take a short break.